I feel like I feel like the uh, I feel like the vocals are a little too loud and maybe a little too I sound like I'm in space or something. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't know anything about reverb. Should I? Go there. Go with it. Follow the reverb. Should I get a psychedelic rock band? 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 Should I get a psychedelic my name is Pat. I am a, I am, I am a nerd. I live in Tucson, Arizona. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play some songs for you. Thank you all. I think I, I think part of it had to do with format. You know, I play a lot of shows with people who play solo acoustic guitar music, and so if I see someone's about to do that, I'm like, well, you know, I might have seen something very similar to this before. But he totally blew me away. Totally, he totally exceeded all of my expectations of what something like that is going to be like. I just yeah. I love this set. And then Toy Cars followed it up yeah. with excellent, excellent, uh, just excellent electric rock and roll music. And then and then these corn people came and they. Yeah. And they and they were not one person with acoustic guitar. They were two people with acoustic guitars, and they had and they, and they had wonderful songs. And then and then uh, 
And then, of course, we had Teenage Halloween, an incredible emotional, emotional hardcore band that played. <laughs> And then we have my old friend Brooke Pridemore, who I've just known him for so many years. We've been on tour together. It is great to play with him. It always is. Um, and then Mikey Erg from this amazing band, The Ergs. It's great. It's great to play with him. I think I got everybody. I'm pretty sure that was all the people who played. This has been an amazing show. Thanks to Luke and thanks to the house for having us. This is a song about repetitive things. I took the laundry at the 24 hour place next to the Dollar Tree. I know that I can walk, but God, I love to drive. I thought about calling and asking forgiveness, but hell, I'm afraid of the dogs that I live with. I guess I'll take it one thing at a time. I thought about Jesse on Tuesday morning. Last I heard, he was still poked up in Portland. I could call him and ask, but hell, I know he'd lie. Like my neighbor, he's got business. If you don't know about it, better keep your distance. Ain't no one on the street ever called a cop in their life. Da-da-da. Like he was already a goner. He said he'd like to change and he could grow his spine. He said when you talk like that, it makes me real nervous. And I was hoping he'd invite me to your funeral service. Throw down your fucking chips, it's life for keeps this time. Like on Thursday when he called and woke me up, I heard he started smoking crack again and got caught up. Catching cases, robbing houses just to stay. So I hung up, I called Vanessa and I told him that I left the rent on the dresser. It wasn't even half the three weeks late this time. Da da da. Da 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 da. 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 On Friday, I do the laundry at the 24 hour place next to the Dollar Tree. Past the neighbors reaching heaven with their trucks so high. I thought about calling and asking forgiveness, but lately I don't even know what that word is. I got police on my six just to think it's a crime. Da da da. A da 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 da. A da da da. A da da da. one in a while because I, I always feel kind of funny playing it not in a not like not in a full electric punk band but you know this show is pretty punk you know we pack in this basement you know I want to 
evil I wore. Tradition with low start numbers. Um, expect weirdness. It just is what it is. Oh, how's everybody doing? My neck hurts. Mark, I don't know if it's my neck. <coughs> eh, my traps. What's, uh, what's up, Ask? Yeah, I think it's my traps and my rhomboids pulling. What's up, Baka? Good morning. Uh, early stream? No. No. This is No. <laughs> I, I had to check the day. I'm like, wait. <laughs> I didn't drag my ass in front of this computer for fucking the wrong time, did I? Uh how you doing, Caboose? Uh wonder if the Swede will be back. No, the Swede will not be back. Oh, he's not on a fucking Wednesday. Maybe tomorrow. A bit sore. Uh, from your walk or something else? Um, yeah, no. Don't expect the Swede to be back, let alone be back today. Looks like we want to do those Osprey are not safe. Uh, you did some weights after the walk. Look at you. <laughs> I want to see patronize Look at you, you big man. Um, not much. Just what I could remember how to do. What's up, Wither? Good on you, Caboose. That's that's all you can do, man. You just got to start. So. Oh. I wish the... Uh, Preacher that I'm going to talk about first was the one that I was that I referenced in the title being arrested. Unfortunately, the douchebag that I'd really love to, um, fucking Dylan Oz, uh, of course of Texas, of course of Texas, Dylan Oz of the Steadfast Baptist Church in Texas, um, said that. Well, I'll let his own words speak for him. <clears throat> What does God say is the answer, is the solution for the homosexual in 2022? Here in the New Testament, here in the book of Romans, that they are worthy of death. 
These people should be put to death. Every single homosexual in our country should be charged with the crime, the abomination of homosexuality that they have. They should be convicted in a lawful trial. They should be sentenced to death. They should be lined up against the wall and shot in the back of the head. That's what God teaches. That's what the Bible says. Don't like it? You don't like God's word? Because that's what God says. So, libtards, destiny. How do I compromise with that? How do I, how do I deal with that? Because as near as I can tell, that man is preaching to his entire church that all gays should be summarily executed. What do I do with that? Maybe just a little bit of gay genocide? Right? Exactly. Oh, uh, yeah. So, you know. Yeah, that. And unfortunately, the uh, the mega pastor church, not the one from last night that we laughed at, the Canadian mega church. Um, this one actually is a big ass fucking church. Um, Mexican mega church uh, pastor, fucking uh, what's this douchebag's name? Nason Joaquin Garcia, um, leader and self styled apostle of the Guadalajara based church La Luz de lo Mundo, uh, in up to well, I mean, in Guadalajara. Um, he, he, you know, child sex abuse. Child sex abuse. 16 plus years for child sex abuse. He got sentenced in the U.S. I think he fled here. Um, only some in evangelical raping and pillaging. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, the pastor I'd really, really love to be in jail right now uh, and not walking the streets. Um, I Beast. Beast. Someone who's stupid enough. Yeah. Somebody who's dumb enough. Jesus. Yeah, let's do that. I'm just going to play around with the stream title. It's been a low stream council recently, too. I don't know what I'm fucking doing. I don't know what I need to do. Anyway. Betty wish he was Catholic right now. <laughs> Fled to the U.S. Not a bad ploy. We seem to actually let that slide. Um, oh, you guys see the, uh, the Russian colonel admit to um, war crimes? RT fucking broadcasted it. RT did us the favor of just like broadcasting a fucking Russian colonel talking about war crimes. Like it was nothing. Torturing POWs. Ты с ним, ну вот общаешься, получается, были такие и ты с ним, ну вот общаешься, получается, он, ну, он такое ощущение, что не он у нас плену, а мы у него плену. Даже такое вот Он дерзкая получается, он не чувствует ни боли, ничего. Это да, это присутствует, и это присутствует That's по всему фронту. Боли, ничего. You know, just a casual, just a casual reference to torturing POWs. What's up, Karina? What's up, Karina's people? We just watched a video of a Russian colonel admitting to uh, torturing POWs. Oh. How'd your uh, how'd your drawing go? Yep, yep, yep. And then we were talking about a uh, kitty diddling priest pastor from Mexico as is tradition, and um, then before that was a uh, 
pastor in Texas who's calling for the summary execution of um, all homosexuals in the U.S. Quote, put them on a wall. Oh, I mean, Beast, he probably was. He probably was, actually. Um, you see uh, fucking Simone Biles um, uh, over the, the fucking Coach Nasser, Dr. Nasser fucking incident uh, for the, what was it, U.S. Women's Gymnastics team? They're seeking a billion dollars from the FBI in settlement. Yeah, Simone Biles and others. I don't know how many. Um, dozens of other women are uh, seeking a billion dollar settlement from the US FBI for failing to stop the doctor uh, when they received allegations against him. I don't see how the FBI has any level of culpability in this. I mean, especially if we if we accept that police, like our just street police, have no like no culpability in these sorts of events. You think you're going to come after the FBI? I, I, I don't see how that's going to fucking play out, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. Peaky, like suing the FBI, like good luck. Jesus. Fuck. Uh, there's 90, approximately 90 claimants. The, the FBI has 90, 90 days. Uh, no, I'm sorry. They have six months to respond to the tort claim. Um, the FBI was made aware in 2015. Leaving him, quote, free to continue to target young women and girls for more than a year. Pleaded guilty 2017 and serving decades in prison. How many decades did we fucking we throw this guy away for? Uh, don't know. Uh, well, you know what? They've paid out before. Apparently, 127.5 million for families of those killed or injured in the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas uh, school shooting because the FBI received a tip about five weeks before um and the tip was never forwarded so they've settled before so let's let's just say they want a billion let's say they give them 125 million all right so okay 125 nope 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 105 30 for the lawyers, so that's 87.5 divided by, say, 90. And they might get a, uh, well, then you have to pay. Yeah, they might get about $500,000 each. They might get about $500,000 each if they're lucky. If they're lucky. Um, <clears throat> have you seen about the British reporter missing in the Amazon? No, I have not. An Amazon warehouse or the Amazon jungle? Because I could see a fucking report, a British reporter going missing in either. Um, but I would assume, um, Fucking the Amazon, the Amazon rainforest, or what's left of the Amazon rainforest, I suppose. It would be funny though, just a fucking dark Amazon warehouse and just a distant British voice on. Hello, hello. I've missed tea time. <clears throat> Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> I know what happened to them. Holy shit. British journalist and indigenous protector are missing in Brazilian Amazon after reported threats. Yeah, homie was there when they probably offed a bunch of indigenous people or burned their fucking land with them on it. Homie had to go. I mean, how many... Let's see. Uh, Brazil reporters missing. What's up, Got? Um, okay, qu quite a few. Quite a few reporters have gone missing from Brazil. Quite, quite, quite a few. Um, so, yeah, he did. 
Or he's being held captive by some, like, you know, militia group associated with one of the logging companies. It's so difficult to tell sometimes. Yeah, we know. Thanks, Dancer. <laughs> it's three separate rulings that dictate that. Yes. Um, hence why we don't need them. Drop the art in the art channel. Ah. <laughs> Fair enough. Nice, Karina. Nice. Um, yeah, that motherfucker's dead. Dude, environmentalists in South America? Are you kidding me? Indigenous protectors, environmentalists, and environmental reporters in South America? That motherfucker's, like, he's either being held hostage somewhere or he's dead. Either way, his life is um, tenuous at best right now. Let's just put it that way. So, we'll see. Oh, let's see. Yeah, if they don't get a ransom request soon, he did. Yeah, I, honestly, how long has he been missing? Sunday at 6 a.m. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. Yeah, he he they went missing. Like the last time they were seen was Sunday at 6 a.m. Nah. Homie's dead. Yeah. Nah. One of the one of the logging groups associated. One of the uh, clear cut fire uh fire setting logging groups is associated with the cattle industry for brazil that they're going in and just clear cutting for all the fucking ranching they got him yeah three days he's gone yeah i mean wither <laughs> uh Oh, Cawthorn, Cawthorn, Cawthorn. When are you going to stop making headlines? He failed to properly disco uh, disclose $950,000 in cryptocurrency trades, including Let's Go Brandon Coin, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. God, the, the image, the photo they chose. Who is that? Business Insider. This is the photo that Business Insider chose to use. I'm not kidding you. It's just another fucking crypto pumping up scheme. Only that one's branded for um, Trump morons. That's all. Oh, uh, I wonder if that. <laughs> I wonder if that's what I want to do. With lost the primary. Uh, um. Yeah, I was just say, hold on. Sorry, 
got distracted by a fucking post here. Somebody was asking about the food dot bombs labeled as a terrorist group, but it's been since like the late eighties since that was the thing. Arizona police union says the Tempe cops will refuse to dive into the lake to save the drowning dude. We're following their training. I'm sure Glazy will be happy to hear that. Um, According to the local police union, cops refused to rescue the drowning man. We're following their training by not jumping in to save him. They have no training in water rescues and do not have equipment to help people at risk of drowning. I, I'm <laughs> Attempting such a high risk rescue could easily result in the death of the person in the water and the officer. God, cops are fucking pussies. Cops are fucking pussies. I know. We showed, we showed the video. We showed the video of the high-risk fucking, uh, fucking maneuver that they were going to have to do. Such a, such a high-risk activity. What's up, Puka? Hmm, I don't know. Let's check those water conditions. <laughs> Fucking, let's see. Hmm, very choppy. Looks like high seas. We might we might have to fucking not not go in. Yeah, got punk. He just fucking stands there at the at the fucking railing while the guy drowns in front of him. I couldn't imagine just standing there watching somebody drown. White water air resolution. White water rapids right there. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't imagine just standing there watching him drown. And then when somebody says, why did you just fucking stand there? You're like, oh, I'm following my training. What kind of garbage fucking human being do you have to be? Oh, wait, a cop. Never mind. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Pork don't swim at least. Nah, I don't know. Hold on. I I'm pretty sure. You know what? Pigs swim. My grandmother saved a kid from drowning in a frozen pond as a resolution. Uh See? See? Pigs swim. Get your fucking fat ass in there and do something, bitch. See? The pigs? Pigs take pigs take to water naturally. Oh, uh, it's horrible. Don't do it. It'll traumatize you for life. What? Just standing there while watching somebody drown? Yeah. Well, not not if you're a cop. They won't feel anything. Cops aren't people. Yeah, I just did it. Yeah, dude. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not aware of too many human beings that can just stand there and watch somebody slowly drown in front of them. I, 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 that, that doesn't seem human to me. That doesn't seem like a human trait. That that seems like some sort of robot. But Kai, the officer, just got his hair done. Kaiser. 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 Look at Uncle Kai. Y'all better give Haz a nice little reception if he and his buddies show up. Show them exactly how welcoming the Anarchist Book Fair in Portland is going to be towards tankies. Please and thank you. Um... I doubt, I doubt that big fucking dumb idiot coward is going to be um, showing up. I, I don't think he'll show up at all. But if he does show up, y'all better give him a nice little Port Portland greeting. That's all I'm saying. Fucking. I don't know when is the, uh, when is the fair? It's coming up. Um, (laughs) 
Seriously, I think the majority of people would be compelled to jump in and save a stranger from drowning. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's set up a table. Yeah, flip that table. <laughs> For me, Pookie. For me. <laughs> uh, do I think we'd eat less meat if we had to kill it ourselves? Yes. Uh, do I think that's a good thing? Yes. Do I want people to stop hunting? No. Just be part of the cycle. Uh, will make you consider it. I was worried to take. I, I haven't, dude, I want to get in Vermont so I can start hunting. I want to take down my own food. <clears throat> there were citizens paralyzed because the cops weren't doing anything. Yeah, see, um... <laughs> don't know, maybe I'm just still naive. Oh, Puka. Um, I think I'd be more compelled to do something if cops were there. Because I would just suspect that they're going to fuck some stuff up. Terminator, The Matrix, Robocop, Minority Report. I wonder why so much material associates with unfeeling machines. I mean, in the case of James Cameron in Terminator, T-1000 was intentional. That was, he's on the record. There's a reason the T-1000 was a cop. <laughs> it's, it's, it's commentary on policing. He's on record for that one. Yeah. <clears throat> or we couldn't, certainly couldn't expect the cops to serve and protect. Yeah, from what I understand, the history of that, uh, that turn of phrase is like there's like one California department that started to use it back in the day, and then it caught on, and they all started to copy it. Oh, Karina, here. Some dude, I, I saw some mini painting on Reddit. Um, just some inspiration for you. It's an Archmage's Techless Cape. Or Archmage Techless's Cape, sorry. Yeah. Here's an Archmage's Cape. Yeah. I was like, ooh, that's pretty. That's a good paint job. If you, uh, here, there's the link to the, the picture if you want it for like inspiration or some shit. <laughs> Looks like the Portland Anarchist Book Fair happens in October. Well, then all I can say is come October, one, Haswell already have forgotten all about his latest temper tantrum. <clears throat> um, he doesn't have an attention span that can hold into October for sure. For sure. Um, but if, if, if on the off chance he does, then I expect all of you Portland anarchist Kaiser to make sure houses welcome in your fair city. Um, good on you, Karina. Oh, oh, uh, I will very much enjoy welcoming Haz as Aspen. Um, oh, Karina, you can just do that from fucking Twitch. Like, go to your, your panel, create a fucking goal. They'll give you a URL. You can just put it on your, like, a browser thing. I love showing tankies a good time since a resolution. Um, I got, good luck. Um, Kaiser. Good. Um, so Thailand is removing cannabis, um, uh, has removed cannabis from their narcotics list. They've also decriminalized growing plants at home. Thailand is finally off that list of dumb shit countries. We had a lot to do with them being on that list in the first place, but that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah. Cannabis uh, now off the nar narcotics list for uh, for Thailand. So go get you some Thai stick. What's up, Crimson? Went to sh went from shooting them in the streets to decriminalizing, huh? Yeah, dude, Thailand was insane there for a minute. They were solidly insane there for a minute. How can you celebrate this? They literally beat up a group of black communists for having the book settlers. One, no, they didn't. They flipped their table. Two, no, they didn't. They flipped their table. Three, no, they didn't. They flipped their table. No one was beaten up. 
you doofy motherfucker. Stop spreading lies and rumors. They flipped their table and told him to get the fuck out of the fair. Tankies weren't welcome. They set their table back up. They flipped their table over again. This time, they took their their bust of Lenin, caved his fucking uh, head in, and turned it into a donation jar next to the other do- uh, other bust of Lenin, with a trans acceptance fl- uh, uh, f- uh, sticker applied to his forehead. They didn't kick the shit out of a black uh, at a black communist at the book fair. You lying son of a bitch. Nice try though. Nice try. They, uh, they told a bunch of authoritarians that they weren't welcome. They refused to leave. They flipped their table. They refused to leave. They flipped their table. Yeah. So. Get lost. We don't want to get lost. They told him, you're not welcome here. Shoot. Take your cringe-ass uh, cringe, uh, cringe authoritarianism somewhere else. Tanky's crying? Odd. I know, right? Nobody wants their fucking cringe-ass authoritarianism. That's why tankies love cops. Tankies love cops. That's why in all of this discourse, the tankies are on the side of cops. Too. They showed up with a bunch of fucking statues of Lenin and shit, too. It was cringe. I try and find a photo. That's what was left of them. No, I'm an anarchist, plain and simple. What's up, Viva? Irresolution. Why do you think? Because they basically worship the dude. It's idolatry at that point. It's fucking ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Dude, it's just idolatry. They worship the guy. I know, I know, but still. Yeah, it's creepy. Oh no, someone finally filled Lennon's head? Yep. Yep, someone finally filled Lennon's head. Aw. There we go. Something, something golden calf. Yeah, no, it's it's weird as shit, man. They, <laughs> it's weird as shit. They they worship this dude, but you know, the anarchists handled it. You're not welcome here. Modern incoms are just diet communists. Yeah, usually. You got a copyright on Twitch, um, Karina? Because you have to, you got to keep an eye out for that. Yeah, if you got a copyright strike on Twitch, dude, you get three of those, they'll pull your fucking account. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I've I've had not had to I've not had to walk through that process, Karina, because I've not caught a copyright strike on fucking Twitch. You get like three of them or some shit like that. You may even get more. I don't even know what the appeals process looks like. <clears throat> Me toad, the kind that carry around painted golden busts of Lenin and Marx. <coughs> And set up tables at anarchist book fairs with shit like settlers. Right? Like, it, it's... What kind of communists? The not bright ones? So, fuck them. They got their table flipped. They got told to kick to kick fucking rocks and has got his little itty bitty pee pee energy all up in a bunch. He just fucking lost his mind. And so he started comparing all anarchists to Hitler, saying that Nazi Germany was an anarchist state. Um yeah. He 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 lost his shit. And is there a video? Not that I'm aware of, Crix. Um and then he started threatening the Portland anarchists like like he's going to do shit to the Portland anarchists. Uh, but he maintained that they'd be coming to the Portland Anarchist Book Fair with dozens of uh, uh, dozens of people with security included. And they they wouldn't the anarchists wouldn't flip his table. So. You know. When I heard when I heard the threat was issued, I tagged Kaiser on Discord immediately. I'm like, hey, just a heads up. <laughs> you know, Has thinks he's gonna come to your fucking town. No, Has is a fucking dummy. He's he's literally one of the dumbest people walking around. Uh, the only reason, like, the only reason people pay attention to him is because he's a fucking train wreck. People are fucking train wreck, and there's a lot of dumb people. There's a lot of fucking edgy 16-year-olds and shit that are like, I'm going to be the next Stalinist revolutionary warrior. I'm the next Che Guevara. You know, woo! Yeah, Aspen's brilliant OPSEC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant OPSEC. Like, heads up, Portland, I'm coming for you. Oh, thanks for the heads up. Your resolution. I'm glad I skipped that phase. Dude, so am I. Dude, I was never a fascist. I was never... Like, I've been in... What's up, Dick? I've been an anarchist most, at my, basically my entire life. Like, I, I just... Like, yeah. <laughs> if you Google PCUSA, most of the results are for the Presbyterian Church. <laughs> um, I mean, they are... I mean, it's the first thing that comes up. Um, see, see if I just type tankies. Still the church. All right, there we go. Party of <laughs> USA. Uh, of course they do fucking. Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, so the communists are in bed with Google, Instagram tracking, Facebook tracking, Twitter tracking, purpose pending investigation. What the fuck is this? Sharing of data is pending investigation. I think this communist website is a honeypot. Oh God, eight points of unity. Okay, no. Just no. Here you can object to our selling of your personal data by entering your email address and name here. We will then remove your data from the databases we sell to third parties. Love <laughs> care much communism, very OPSEC. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I'm gonna drop this meth on the sidewalk. If this is your meth, please let us know. Dr. Angelo D'Angelo D'Angelo. Oh, that's 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 for sure a real name. For sure. This is this is the privacy de contact details for Well, I don't know which one it is. 252 246 248 I think it's this one. Uh, maybe this one. Hang on. Why are we? Two four zero. This street is ordered very strangely. So I think these are duplexes. So two four zero, two four two, two four four, two four six. I'm guessing. Yeah. So I'm guessing this is two four six. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's this one. Yes, it's the right hand duplex. Okay, so that is a six. So it's a Subaru, in fact. Not a Corvette, Subaru. All right, so what's their eight points of unity? Oh God, literally, literally calling for a Vanguard party. Opposite. Oh, scientific socialism. All right, where, where was it? I saw it. I saw it. Or training and <sighs> uh, Bernie Sanders isn't a communist. So wait, in exchange for my personal data, I can learn martial arts? Yeah, they're not offering them. Oh, this is hilarious. I mean, what's a century between friends, Maleficarum? Oh look, it's Russians in uh, it's uh, Republicans in Russia. It's an all it's a it's an all American Fourth of July with Republicans in Russia. I mean, Russia's clearly not fucking.
The only time I can find Bernie Sanders on Russian soil is in 1988. Where his wife and he took a honeymoon vacation and spent some time in Yaroslavl. That's the only time I can find Bernie Sanders setting foot on Russian soil. So what you got, Inichu? Bernie Sanders vacation, <laughs> fucking vacations in Russia. He went once, like literally three, three plus decades ago. Uh, mostly a resolution. He vacations in Vermont. He likes to spend time in his cabin up in Vermont. They've got a cabin up there. It's where he spends a lot of his vacation time. Is next to a lake, surrounded by woods in Vermont. You mean one of his three homes? One of his three homes and the Lake Champlain home was bought before, uh, by his book proceeds? Uh, narrator, we got two people in chat right now who don't know shit about shit, apparently. Yeah, and the other one was a family deal. Yeah. He's got a he's got a quaint cabin on Lake Champlain. He's got his home in Chittenden, um, and then he's got uh, his place in D.C. that he stays at when he's working. Yeah, his his book um, bought him the Champlain house. This is this is this is the house Bernie bought with his book money. I, B said B. It's a perfectly nice place to live, but yeah, it's definitely not rich guy nice. It's just a lower middle class home in Vermont. And Marcus, until his book, he was the poorest member of the Senate, and his wife out earned out earned him twice over. A, num a best-selling book, Crimson. Not just a book, but a best-selling book. So, yeah. I love how people will make a fucking... A defense for Hassan. But they'll fucking hang Bernie out to dry. It's like... Bernie spent his entire life as a broke-ass fucking... Representative of the people. Finally, when he's like 75, he gets a fucking cabin on a, a house on the lake because he writes a best selling book and people start reading. Fucking, this is a dude that was hauled off the fucking streets during civil rights. 
literally like surrounded by German shepherds, picked up by both arms, dragged off the fucking streets while the fire hoses were going. It's a motherfucker that stood on the congressional floor and said, we should dissolve the criminal organization that is the CIA. What have you motherfuckers done? Right? Like this motherfucker put some skin in the game. He fucking, he moved the needle. He pushed for progressive politics on a national scale. He did way more than Hassan ever fucking could, could dream of doing. And he profited way fucking less doing it. What'd you do, Donald J. Harris? What TV show, didn't you? You're going to make claims. You better back them up. You better be prepared to dox yourself. Datelines, Azaka. Tiger King. Same thing with Har uh, Warren. Yeah, Harvard paid her and her husband six figure salaries, but her real money came from writing eleven widely used law textbooks. Look at the, like look at this author page. To what she wrote, she's always struck me as a fucking like she can put out content, like she can write. <laughs> Comprehensive commercial law, bankruptcy, and Article Nine. Fucking. <laughs> Oh. No, I wasn't talking to you, Donald. I literally said Inichu. Literally said another user's name who came in and said that their, or what they had done, their story became a TV show. Literally not talking to you, dummy. So I don't give a shit about who you are. Your criticisms are valid, but they're moot compared to everything else. The dumb is overflowing again. <laughs> Bullshit. Bullshit. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. Fucking Morbius. Yeah, right? So you get royalties, right? <laughs> Clearly... Fucking all of Dexter is based on your intellectual property. It's based on your life. You should get uh, likeness rights as well. Bullshit. Just bullshit. Transformers is based off, uh, is mine. More than meets the eye. Mm-hmm. Sure they did. Sure they did. Beast is, I'm Goku. Which Dexter, the laboratory one or the murder psycho one? Murder psycho one, Viva. He's he's claiming that the, the Showtime, uh, the, the series of books, because there's like not eight or nine books, and then the Showtime series based on those books is his idea. Yeah, he's claiming it's him. It's based on his life. Dexter was inspired by Brazilian serial killer Pedro Rodriguez Filho, says Crix. Really? I'm sure we could probably cross-reference that, right? Dexter, Morgan, Pedro Rodriguez 
the real life Dexter Morgan. Interesting. Fascinating. Because I'm looking at writing credits here, homie, and this should be fun. Hi, I'm Jeff Lindsay, author of uh, the Dexter books, Darkly Dreaming Dexter, Dearly Devoted Dexter, and uh, what's the third one again? I can't remember. It's uh, something with the word Dexter in it. Uh, oh, Dexter in the Dark, yes. A lot of people want to know uh, where the whole idea for Dexter came from, and uh, I've told the story a lot of times, but the sad thing is it's true. Um, I was asked to speak to a businessman's lunch in my hometown and give them a little chat on you know, encouraging the arts and how important it is to read something longer than a matchbook from time to time. And I was sitting at the head table looking at the audience and watching them smile when they didn't mean it and hand out business cards and talk with their mouths full. And the idea just popped into my head unbidden that it was serial murder isn't always a bad thing. Uh, and I'm not saying I wanted to kill all these people, but it just occurred to me, you know, it, we have a real life schizo poster in chat right now. We have a real life schizo poster in chat. Just so you know. I dude, that's two schizo posters in a week. The one on Reddit and now this fucking nut job. We have a real life schizo poster. Technically, you could think of a way to justify it. And so I started technically justifying on the back of a bunch of napkins. And by the time I went home that day, I had a, an outline of the first book and the idea for Dexter himself. Now, as I did, Research. It's weird. He doesn't mention more, you at um, all. The idea of a, of a dark passenger became interesting and appealing. I, same, same here, narrator. Same here. To me. And psychologically, there's a million sides to that. But basically, the idea is that it's, it's just sort of a quiet presence most of the time. But as the need to kill grows stronger and stronger, um, as time passes, the dark passenger becomes a little bit more and more vocal. I think it's very important that Dexter... Um, kills people who, according to his code, deserve it. And it's a code that we can all agree with to some extent, at least. To some small extent, we'll all go, oh, well, yeah, he was disemboweling children. Of course he deserves to die. Um, and that's important because... Um, so you're going to shut the fuck up now, right? Like, I don't have to listen to your idiocy anymore? Oh, fuck, my channels are reversed. <laughs> yeah, nonsense. That's, uh, that was in the left channel. Mm, sure, 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 sure. Sure you did. Um, if no one wants to talk to the schizo poster, I'm going to time him out so I don't fucking have to listen to mental illness. Um, the man who fell to earth was based on me, says Akka. I'm Bowie, but on coke. Uh, um... Can I show this on screen? Um, I don't know if I can. You know what? Hold on. Yeah, and this one's based on me. <laughs> Caboose, Rain Man was based on me. I'm taking Labyrinth. Oh, I'm not, I'm not touching that, Karina. Fucking Weird Al. Yeah, if we're if we're just taking if we're just picking, I'm taking Bowie and um, if we're if we're going for Bowie properties, right? If we're if we're uh, taking Bowie properties that is that are based on us, I'm taking Labyrinth. Um, dude, you're delusional and it's sad. It's sad, man. 
dude, this is, you're like that fucking middle schooler. You're like that fucking middle schooler that like, nah, -uh, my, my, my dad, my dad works for like the super secret Pentagon branch. <laughs> And he told me that the, 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 the alien ship that we were... Dude, you're fucking schizo-posting. It's sad. What a fucking weirdo. What a fucking weird claim. Jeff Lindsay was stalking me and got the idea for the Dexter, ser Dexter Morgan serial killer fucking character from me. That is the weirdest fucking lie I have probably heard anyone tell yet. I have dibs on Tommy Shelby. In weeb speak, that's called uh, Chinabio. Chinabio? Eighth grader syndrome. Bigger fish storyteller. <laughs> yeah, Carpe. <laughs> My dad can beat up your dad. Sarah definitely chose wrong. I mean, he would have to uh, literally gave her anything, but you know, movies can't always go how we want. <laughs> Nonsense. Mike Wallace wants my body. I just got deja vu from your impression. We've been here before with some other schizo. Uh, oh, fucking A. Dude. Fuck if I know. You think I track you weirdos? You're a shit. Some other nut job. Yeah. Fire. He bought a three and a half million dollar property in a in an uh, area of town that was overly expensive and unnecessary to buy. All the while uh, flying around to concerts on its private jet and hosting people at extraordinarily expensive restaurants and uh, shows in Las Vegas. All the while talking about the socialist revolution. How is that not fucking grifter? With all due respect, fire. Open your fucking eyes and pay the fuck attention. This is like some fucking mega church shit. And you're like, I don't see it. Jesus says he needs a private jet. The fuck, man? What does it take? What does it take to be a hypocrite in your eyes? Does he have to? He never does that. He literally bought the house and he literally was on a private jet like last month. Does the house not exist? How about the, what is it, the Porsche? How about the property in West Hollywood? None of this exists. None of this is just, it's just not, it's just not stuff. He wasn't here in Vegas, fucking handing out tickets and just taking people to expensive shows. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Jesus can walk on water, but you can't expect him to fly. Yeah, we didn't watch that go down at all. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. Consistently full of shit. Bruh, Hassan and Op. Socialism is when private jet. It looks like somebody likes to lick Hassan's ass. Hassan's out of my tax bracket, so I don't listen to his shit either.
not what's the right dollar amount and the right location, not West Hollywood, where he artificially drove up the cost of the house because he just had to be in the hot location and he needed name recognition. He need he needed to be in uh, West Hollywood, right? Like he he needed to be in in the location, right, adjacent to you know the gentrified gay location, right? So right price? Oh, I don't know, something south of a million dollars, right? Like he could have taken that three and a half million dollars, mortgage included, fucking and revitalized any area revitalized any area, actually done a praxis with his socialism. He could have started a workers co-op. He could have ensured that workers, uh, unionizing workers in an area could uh, potentially set up a co-op. He could have created a fund using that money. He could have started all sorts of programs, but no, he, he went for the house in West Hollywood with the pool, with the multiple stories, with the, the the access to the clubs. And so he could fucking fly to Coachella on the private jet and live the champagne socialist life that he wants to live. Okay. But don't fucking blow smoke up my ass and tell me he's some somehow a socialist. At best, he's a champagne socialist. And more likely, he's a fucking capitalist who has some dem sock aesthetics. Don't fucking tell me he's a socialist. He's a LA socialite. Yeah. He's a glamour himbo. <laughs> that sounds like petty envy. That sounds like dick sucking. Fire. What, what, what's it feel like to have that cock that far back in your throat? Man, homie. What is it? Why are you defending this person? You're literally defensive. Sounds like petty envy, Kai. It sounds like you have part of your ego attached to him. Why Why does me insulting Hassan insult you, Fire? Let's, let's investigate this. Why is it a personal insult towards you to insult Hassan? Why is he that much of your idol? And... How can you not see the hypocrisy of flying to Coachella on a fucking private jet when, by the way, environmentally speaking, he could have gotten there much, much better and much easier. But, you know, he went, went the champagne socialist route, as he always does. He always does. Parasocial loyalty is weird as fuck, says Carpe. <laughs> nonsense. Love you, nonsense. Um... Did Hassan get his start from a relatively successful anchor on TYT? His uncle is literally the founder of TYT. It's like learning somebody, hey, how did that actor get a start acting? Oh, their, their father is the president of ABC Studios. However, did they get their start in acting? Oh, it's so strange. Even if I was a billionaire, I wouldn't get a private jet, says Ice Krieg. Yeah. I know, right? God, the environmental impact of a private jet alone. How? Oh, gee, how did Andrew and Chris Como? Uh, Hassan doesn't give two shits about any of us. It's hilarious that people defend him and anyone else who is a celebrity. Yeah, you know he doesn't. How did Pelosi? I know, right? Any Kennedy. Oh, the Kennedys. Oh, the Kennedys. <laughs> you can get an electric guitar. No, private electric, uh, uh, private electric glider. Interesting.
Wait, did somebody really convince this idiot that his house was haunted? Jesus Christ, he's fucking retarded, too. I'll buy a train and have a car for me and make it super nice for everyone else, too. Make it cheap to ride. Oh, jeez, beast. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking um, cupcake. Yeah, close out the prediction poll from last night. If you put in a no, you got points coming your way. Curiouser and Curiouser got the fucking prediction on that one. I wish I could get the fucking list. Is that over on the, uh, the panel? No, I don't get the actual fucking list. That's lame. They should give me a full breakdown. Um, irresolution. It was whether he'd catch a ban or not. He was a Swedish ethno-nationalist. Yeah. Yeah. He was a Swedish ethno-nationalist that was undercover for all intents and purposes, or he attempted to be. Flying's not that bad. I mean, it's a terrible experience, especially these days. Um, but, you know, that's what happens when you fly like a peasant. If you fly private like Hassan does, then flying isn't that terrible. It's actually a pleasant experience. You bypass all security because security is for peasants as well when you fly private. Um, you just walk right up to the uh, terminal. You walk out to the fuck, uh, to the, uh, onto the plane directly. Yeah, all of all of the uh, the measures that make it uh, make flying miserable for you and I don't actually apply to private jets. Now, that's that's how peasants fly. Yeah, security is for labor, not for capital. Exactly, Carpe. Who was and uh, who was an ethno nationalist? Um, some guy last night. Chat chat had a lot of fun with him. Let's just put it that way. Chat had a lot of fun with him. Um, Scarecrow 64 apparently was his name Was Scarecrow 69 taken Um, Don't know What rich people get up to in private jets. Oh, yeah. You can do all sorts of fun stuff in there. Pets. Get drunk. Personal assistance. Insane luggage. Food. $18 for a single lemon. Jesus Christ. High-end staff, fat invoices, slim margins. Yeah. Does it mention the underage sex slaves? It's one banana, Michael. Um, can we watch the Destiny rant about fucking Hassan? Where was it? It's way under that, above that. There we go. How long is it? Oh, it's only three minutes. Why not? It's only three minutes. Hassan is literally living the most impressive, most...
capitalistic, most hyper disgusting consumeristic life that has ever happened in like all of what you can do. Like the constant fucking showing off of the clothes, the obsession with porn stars, the I dated a porn star, I go to the adult video things, the I'm donating thousands of dollars to porn. He's donated more money to porn stars on Twitch than he's made like political campaign contributions. From going to like living in the US, to living in Turkey, to moving all over the world because his family will pay for him to live wherever, to getting the job at his uncle's fucking like political area, to making friends on Twitch and then moving into politics here, and then to exploiting on Twitch by watching other people's fucking 90 day fiance videos and shit. But to do all of that and then to like turn and be like, fuck celebrities. I don't think that, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that they should have this much money or fuck the, fuck Jeff Bezos, blah, blah, blah. Harassment to you is getting downvoted on LSF, okay? To cry because I tweeted out that it was funny that he bought a $3 million Playboy mansion in fucking West Hollywood while wearing a shirt that says make the rich pay. Like, calm the fuck on, dude. That is so rich, okay? Get the fuck over yourself, all right? It's right. Like, there's no way that you're hiding the fact that you're buying a $3 million fucking mansion, okay? It's not for your mom. Shut the fuck up. Don't fucking lie, okay? It's to bring over porn stars to impress them so you can fuck them. That's why you're buying a $3 million mansion, okay? Okay? You're a, sh a shameless fucking sellout, okay, that just wants to live the most richest fucking capitalist-infused, consumerist-obsessed lifestyle. If you want to live that life, then fucking do it. I don't give a fuck. But don't turn around and get so fucking mad when people are like, wait, hold on, bro. Wait, the guy that wears the anarchy shirts is moving to WeHo? But don't sit here and say, like, I doxed you. Like, calm the fuck on, bro. I understand that you've had a really easy life. Your entire life has probably Later, been Alex. incredibly Thanks for the fucking raid. easy. I understand you've had an easy time in politics and an easy time on Twitch. But, like, just because your time has been so easy doesn't mean that as soon as you, like, have somebody type LOL at you on Twitter, you can start throwing around words like, I got doxed. Damn, dude. Fucking chill. Okay? Holy fuck, how fucking irritating. Like, fuck off. Don't try to invoke, like, Amaranth's house on fire shit to Hassan's house that he doesn't even live in yet, being fucking found out by, like, mainstream publications because $3 million buys are, like, really well known. Like, Hassan should buy it with a trust. Buy it with an LLC. Get, like, a third party. Figure out another way to do it. Like, don't fucking cry because some other fucking journalistic thing found it. And then my tweet that got, like, one-fifth as many likes as you have concurrent viewers. My tweet had, like, 6,000, 7,000 likes. You have 30... Oh, fuck you, fire. I'm surrounded by closet libs. Oh, yes. How dare we ask somebody not to be a fucking blatant hypocrite? How dare we attempt to demand some level of ideological and ethical framework consistency from him? Oh, oh, how dare we? Oh, such, such horrible shit libs we all are that we ask the dude who advocates for fucking socialism to no come on. Fire, have you ever even met him? How do you even know him personally? Uh, Fire, you know nothing about him. All you have is a parasocial relationship with him. How can you speak on this matter? You have barely have a parasocial relationship with him. Has he even ever spoken to you? Do you even know this motherfucker? Has he ever even said two fucking words to you? Why are you licking this grifter fuck's asshole so deeply? You got your fucking tongue shoved up this dude's ass. What the fuck, man? This is the weirdest shit. This dude buys a three and a half fucking million dollar mansion in West Hollywood all the while talking about how we need to fucking eat the rich and rise of socialism. He's riding around on fucking, fucking private jets to fucking Coachella and banging fucking porn stars and shit. Meanwhile, you're like, oh, he's of the people. He's ideologically consistent. He's a fucking savior of mankind, apparently. All praise Hassan Piker. Oh, what the fuck, man? This is the weirdest shit. This is, forget the dude who is schizo posting about fucking being the inspiration for fucking uh, Dexter Morgan earlier. This is some weird ass shit, man. This is some weird ass shit. He doesn't even know you exist. And you're up in here defending this motherfucker. 
You're like fucking do, taking blows and fucking doing a rope a dope and fucking catching uppercuts and shit. And you're like, yeah, this is my boy. This is my man. I'll go to the mat for him. You don't know shit. None of you know shit. You're all fucking secret libs. Fucking Hassan, ride or die. What the fuck, man? This is weird. There's valid criticisms of him. Some, like, really valid criticisms of him. And to deny they exist, to downplay them in the way that you are, is just weird. At the end of the day, I don't give a shit if Hassan Piker disappears tomorrow. I don't care if he fucking becomes emperor of the globe. At the end of the day, he doesn't fucking matter to me. But this is really fucking weird. That you're defending him this deeply, this much, when we all know this shit. This isn't, oh, you've never been in a stream show, how do you know? Literally the entirety of the internet knows this about him. Literally. The entirety of the internet knows this shit about him. Because he's such a fucking fame-hungry himbo. He's all about that. Dude, if you gave him a movie career, he'd fucking leave politics behind in an instant. He'd never look back. He'd never look back. If you said, hey, I got, I got fucking Brad Pitt's fucking agent on the phone and he wants you. He thinks you're the next Brad Pitt. Gone. You never hear a fucking word from him again in the political scene. He'd be gone an instant. He'd be like, peace out. I got my movie career. Yeah, the fucking yeah, caboose. It's weird as shit, man. He'd be gone in a fucking instant. You have two shits about any of you. Just a brand to him. He got his start in leftism and rode that to success. Uh, yeah, where's that fucking... Um... Oh, yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Cupcake. That was exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, where's that fucking Elon uh, meme you put up, Caboose? Because that's, that's feeling appropriate I think you put it up I don't fucking know either way we don't like capitalist dickheads we don't like authoritarians. We don't like people who uh, utilize the political system to manipulate themselves into million dollar positions. Hassan does that. What, 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 what part of, there we go. Thank you, Caboose. Jesus fucking Christ. What I do here doesn't matter. This is the educational part of my practice. My real world stuff, we don't talk about. Because there's... I don't want attention on what I do in the real world. <laughs> That's not useful to getting shit done in the real world. This, this is just fucking entertainment and education. This is outreach. It's all this is. Krieg, I'm okay. I'm guilty of defending Elon. Public, N not not only do we not love Elon, we don't love Hassan either. Public. What do we got? Yeah, yeah. I saw that Supreme Court vote. Hmm, interesting. Mm -mm. Uh, um, the, um, the Border Patrol one. The Border Patrol one. Yeah. 
how uh, the Border Patrol agents were uh, immune from prosecution uh, for the um, the excessive violence that they were using on the border. Um, you know, when they got caught on horseback, fucking beaten, um, beaten refugees and stuff like that. They're not. Of course, they're not. Of course, they're not. Of course, they're not. Yes, yes, wordy. And given they've got a 100-mile exclusion zone, it's a whole thing. Yeah, it's a whole thing. I voted for a guy specifically because his campaign was fuck Elon, fuck Tesla. Nice. Uh, Caboose, I went in that exclusion zone. Lots of people are within that exclusion zone. Yeah, lots of fucking people are in that exclusion zone. Except, is he? Is he, Craig? Like, is he actually? I, I have doubts. Tech support. Honestly, it's time to examine how well Hassan serves the role of baby's first pop, uh, pop socialism as a capitalist venture. That's not a situation that's going to stay reliable for us as a movement, even neglecting who Hassan, who Hassan, who Hassan is, what he does. Uh, Jen, yep, I'm in the zone. Lots of people are. Lots of people are in that exclusion zone. Yeah, it's absolutely ri ridiculous. Caboose. <laughs> oh, caboose. Uh, oh, wrong one. Wrong one entirely. Jesus Christ. There we go. Oh, what'd you say, public? We haven't really left the planet. Uh, oh, interesting. Billionaires can only duplicate. That's capitalism for you. I know, right? How you live your life is not an aesthetic complaint fire. It's functional. Of course I answered it, but he's got his head so far up Hassan's ass, he doesn't hear us. He's just convinced these are all aesthetics. The fact that he's fucking living in West Hollywood, the fact that he spent over $3 million on his fucking house, the fact that he rides around on private planes, the fact that he spends more money on fucking porn stars, apparently, than he does with his actual fucking donations. I'd love to see the veracity of that claim on Destiny's part. But either way, these are all aesthetics. These are all aesthetics. Yes. 100%. It's, it's like the color choice on my wall. Mm -hmm. Same difference. Same difference. What does he do? Generally makes a lot of fucking money. Does he guide people into actual leftism? Mm. Press X to doubt. Or does he just give people a watered down version of Democrat? As far as I can tell, what he does with his platform is he makes a shit ton of money that he blows on mansions, porn stars, and private jets. Watches MasterChef, says funny things, says lefty slogans, plays Vidya, says Malefa Karim. What do I do? I feed people. It's my particular thing. I really don't like people going hungry. It's a bother to me. So, I make sure people stay fed. Retail package sucked them. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. 
There was a time when he was more aligned with leftist ideology. Money changes people, says a resolution. See, there's a, there's a more generous take. Maybe once upon a time he was more leftist, but not the Hassan that's walking around now. I don't know what that dude's about, but sorry. I'm sorry we shat on your fucking idol. I think that's it. I still remember him on TYT, and de he de he has definitely changed his public. All right. Well, there you go. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, they're doing the uh, fucking Sandy Hook Alex Jones thing on um, the the right wing conspiracy theorists. Are uh, claiming that the none of the uh, the kids shot in Uvalde are uh, have birth uh, have birth records in the U.S. or in the state of Texas, and that they were all crisis actors. Uh, it's starting to go around on the fucking Telegram fucking shit. That uh, like here, no birth records for any of the Uvalde massacre child victims. Connect the dots. Um, so yeah, fun times, posthumous dehumanization, fucking brain worms. Uh, so you actually interact with people outside of a computer screen? You says Viva. Ugh, conspiracy theorists, man, public, they're a special breed. They're a special type. If it was a false flag, why wouldn't they just kill the kids? Because reasons? I think. Yeah, public. I again, if you start applying Occam's razor to conspiracy theories, um, all right, Karina, um, you're going to be so solely dis sorely disappointed. You're going to be sorely disappointed. If you start applying Occam's razor to conspiracy theories, <laughs> I don't even call them conspiracy theorists. They're professional schizo posters. Uh, yeah, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. What are you going to do? Uh, Carpe, um, It's often misstated as the uh, simplest solution is uh, often the correct answer, but Occam's razor in practice is actually more complex than that. Um, yeah, part, uh, principle of parsimony. Entities should not be multiplied beyond necessity is the technical, but it's always listed as um, the simplest solution is often the correct solution. The government's a bunch of psychopaths. Why would they draw the line at third grade? Public, 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 public. You're thinking about this. <laughs> You're thinking about this. That's the problem. You're thinking. Knock that off. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, public. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? Yeah, public. I was in that camp. I spent some time in there. I just want to make uh, make sure I distinguish it from Pascal's wager, which they also don't apply to reality. <laughs> then I got banned for being a shill and sharing their own articles to disprove other articles. <laughs> Yeah, Carpe. You know, sometimes, sometimes a fucking typo just keeps slipping out. I miss Planet X. That one was fun. Nibiru, Beast. Nibiru. Yeah, Nibiru is fun. Uh, don't, don't, <laughs> public. Don't. He was trying to type. Don't. Um. Yeah, Nibiru is a fun conspiracy. Such a cont. Bring on the Anunnaki. I know, right? Oh, God. Um, let's see. 
Oh, it's like Trump and his kids are going to fucking uh, are subpoenaed to testify officially. So conspiracy theories like these on work and emotional level, they appeal to people's sense that something is wrong in the world. That's why believers almost never convince with reasonable arguments. Yeah, it's not about logic and reason. It's an ego play. It's a claim to know uh, something you can't possibly know. And it's an understanding of a complex and scary situation oftentimes. So, yeah, they play on you a few different ways. Um, let's see. Oh, God, yeah. Fucking DeSant see DeSantis' spokeswoman um, registered as a for uh, re a registered as a foreign age as an agent of a foreign politician, belatedly. Apparently, DeSantis' spokeswoman has been an agent of a foreign politician for quite some time, but she uh, <clears throat> kind of forgot to mention it. Um, former president of Georgia, as in, you know, that Georgia. <laughs> Didn't you know being an agent is just something that slips your mind now and then? She's in too deep. And it's comforting to believe that serendipity doesn't exist because otherwise uh, maybe we're all moats in an uncaring uh, cosmos and hey, this would make a great idea for a horror mythos. Hmm. Uh, Wordy, you still can. Yeah, you can definitely make a solid um, um, like uh, RPG campaign out of conspiracy theories, 100%. Capitalist alienation fuels conspiracy mindsets. Society is falling apart and your job has been de-skilled out of existence. It's probably the globalist trans agenda and not anything to do with who owns the actual economy, um, says narrator. Uh, public. <clears throat> so with the Vegas shooting years ago, Free Thought Project had info showing that the hotel was faking conspiracies online, much like how the Hillary campaign had hired people to smear people online. Then they kept showing those stupid conspiracies about how he was a gun runner and he actually killed by uh, FBI and then the shooting happened. Cree, um, public. They, I've heard so many conspiracy theories involving the, the Vegas shooter over time. You know, fucking Vegas local and all that shit, right? Yeah, we, we got quite a few. We got quite a few. Um, he was an agent of Sheldon Adelson there as well. It's a whole fucking thing. Creek, I played a conspiracy tabletop RPG once. Ah, I mean, public or, you know, he was a crazy dude who took a bunch of fucking ammo in a series of cases over a period of time up to a hotel room and fucking started popping rounds off, <laughs> you know, or that, or that, but you know, who's got time for that? Oh, fucking A. All right. Let's see. Wait, what am I? Okay. Oh, look, self-made millionaire Harris Rosin adopted a Florida neighborhood called Tangelo Park. He cut the crime rate in half, increased the high school graduation rate from 25,000 to 100,000 by giving everyone free daycare and all high school graduates scholarships. Fascinating. So one single multimillionaire managed to uplift an entire community and create generational solutions to problems. Huh. Yeah, public. That's the Florida guy. Yeah. No, Caboose, of course the billionaires don't do that. A lot of the millionaires don't do that. Jesus, look at some of these fucking turnaround rates. That didn't take a lot of cash either. 500000 a year. 500,000 a year. 500,000 a year is what he spends. Less less than what he be, he began uh, when he began the program. That's what the maintenance cost on this is. Keeps an entire town out of poverty. Keeps the high school graduation rate at 100%. Fuck 
400 and f over 450 scholarships distributed. Five hundred thousand a year is what he spends. He lifted an entire fucking town out of poverty and created generational change with five hundred k a year. Don't know how that might be relevant. Hmm. Let me try and find the original sum. I can tell you Aspen, he's spent eleven million dollars since Nineteen ninety four. He spent eleven million dollars in totality since nineteen ninety four. So about three hundred and ninety two thousand a year. Uh Mr. Gaxp. Thanks for the follow. Um yeah, he spends about three ninety two a year across the board. Yeah, it's it's eleven million since ninety uh, uh, ninety four. Yeah, the entire fuck like he lift un uplifted an entire fucking community. Later, resolution. Take care of yourself. Just saying. 11 million over 28 years. Shit. Yeah. It's nothing. And he showed he could literally eliminate... Um, he's got a 100% high school graduation rate. 100%. He went from like 20% or some shit. 25% high school graduation rate in the community to 100%. Yeah, he cut the crime rate in half and increased the graduation rate 75% uh, uh, up to 100% by spending $11 million over 28 years. So you want to know why I'm a little annoyed by $3 million here and a private jet there and a Porsche there is because you can literally change the lives of hundreds of people with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little obnoxious. It's a little fucking obnoxious. It's almost like people just need someone to believe in them to succeed. And, you know, no financial barriers, says public. Yeah. It's a little obnoxious. That That's all it took. It took one dude and $11 million over three decades to just completely transform a town. Sure. Or a McMansion in West Hollywood suppose it's all about what you value at the end of the day whether you would prefer a few people not to starve or you know porn house I'm sure Joel Osteen um, welcome back dig I'm sure Joel Osteen um, what the fuck is you your, uh, you and your country doing? Damn. Viva, yeah, we suck. I'm sure Joel Olstein encourages his people to, um, to, what the fuck is this? Oh, interesting. Cricks, duly noted and thank you. Um, rock on, dig. Pressed a lot of unsure and <laughs> didn't get some questions. Uh, I'll, if you're ever curious, Dig, I'll walk you through it. 
public. He's Christian, so probably give out dirty coats and expired soup while looking smug and telling them that they're only alive because of you. That's what Jesus said, right? Oh, shit about foreign policy. Eh, we'll get you there, Dick. And public, and that's why I don't do Mormon charity. I've heard interesting things about the Mormon charities over the years. That's that's for sure. Well, I've heard some interesting things about the Mormons over the years, I suppose, right? Oh, fire, I've stopped interacting with you. What 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 shared ground? What shared ground? We clearly disagree. It is what it is. It's convenient, yeah. If you want, you could probably start your own stream. Um, yeah, dig, right? So you know firsthand that he doesn't donate to a variety of organizations and charities? Because donating to organizations and charities is not literally just a tax write-off. He's donated tens of thousands of dollars, but you just said what? I said he could have uplifted an entire town instead of buying a McMansion. He could have changed hundreds of people's lives for generations instead of buying a McMansion. He could be out feeding people with his own hands and his own labor instead of paying random charitable organizations to do it for him so he can get a tax write-off. That's what I fucking said. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tax break for him. And the fact that you've seen the receipts is super encouraging. Hey, guys, I just want to show you that I just donated uh, fucking $500 to fucking Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. It's like the fucking dudes that on YouTube that walk up and give $100 to a homeless person and then film it and then make a couple of thousand off the YouTube ad revenue. Yeah. Nothing grifter or fucking capitalistic or exploitative about that whatsoever. He's going to get his name on a building in some bougie art school for a dono. Hell, Vosh probably raised a million for legit charities over the last year, says Beast. Charity Industrial Complex is a fun bread tube search, says Tech Support. Yeah, dude. Yeah. You literally don't get it. You don't get it. Look at what your money just paid for. As I sit in my mansion, you also paid for it. Sounds like that gross philanthro capitalism that Mr. B says. Can't imagine. Can't imagine. Ooh. Oh, that's a different journalist. Are we... Jesus Christ. That Brazilian journalist, that that fucking journalist is gone, dude. the The Brazilian uh, fucking high court had to order the government to fucking actually look for him. He's fucking gone. He's gone. 
Holy shit. Brazilian federal court ordered the government to step up its search uh, efforts. They literally just were like, what missing journalist? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, he's he's fucking dead beast. Apparently the guy who last reported him has been arrested on uh, weapons charges too, by the way. The fisherman who saw him last, the fucking Brazilian police went in and arrested him on weapons charges. Invisible people at stream, uh, YouTube stream, ex homeless guy producers at a point he could use guys as influence, FYI. Um, A3, wonder what you're talking, uh, expand. Dig because you're un you're not allowed to criticize somebody's favorite person. And apparently he's some people's favorite person. Being a principled leftist and having criticisms about hypocritic uh, hypocritical practices um, is apparently lib shit, secret lib shit stuff and unfair. So that's just is what it is. Oh, let's see. What do we got? Oh, fucking has again. Jesus Christ has take it down a notch. Don't you dare criticize Batman. Because you keep repeating it. You keep doing it. Dig. I watched him from Trump's first run just about daily from two years ago. I'm aware of him and his beliefs, but his actions don't follow, so I don't watch him. Invisible people stream producers finally seeing futility of political solutions to homelessness and seeing how mutual aid people are getting shit done. If you know him, A3, send him my way. Let me talk to him. Yeah, I don't usually just, you know, but like for sure. It's so weird to me, like, Argentina and Chile are stable, uh, stable industrialized democracies, and Brazil is right next door as a burning circus where the dancing bears escaped. Um, Batman is a fast change my view. He's lacking a couple of characteristics. Uh, Karina, Caboose, enjoy. I, wordy, I don't, you know, yeah. Uh, Wordy, I think I'm going to spin up a new multiplayer world on uh, Zomboid as well. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it tonight, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a new multiplayer world, and I know you're a Zomboid player as well, so um, I just wanted to make sure you knew um, because we're I'm, I'm going to be getting some sessions in here. I want to do an entirely new world build and a new run on that world, a new run type on that world. Would Batman just be a little bit worse? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm going to try and um, get a few people in. I want to get Karina's fucking Zomboid installation fixed first. Um, that way she can participate as well. Um, so... See if Buddhist has time as well. He's been really, really busy lately. Um, but yeah, if we get you, we get uh, Cat, we get Caboose, we get Karina, we get uh, fucking Buddhist, myself. Uh, we have a few other players too. I forget who else plays Zomboid. Let's see. Hold on, I have a list. Um, let's see. 
But there we go. Uh, Radical Maniac plays as well. Um, let's see. Vulture plays. Aspen plays. Caleb plays. Esk plays. Um, looks like Pound Coin plays as well. All right. We got a few, uh, few different people in on it. It's a good game. Um, I'm down. I'm trying to kill some time before, uh, between more organizing events, so I'm going insane. Um, Beast, yeah, it's a good game. It is. He's modded all the hell and back, but it's a good game, definitely. Um, so. Yeah. I want to um, I want to do a, a all points map spread at like a yeah, dig. We'll get around to that. No worries. Um, all points map spread uh, to uh, a, a compound run. I want to see how quickly we can all get to a compound like on the outskirts of Louisville and then raid Louisville really fast. Uh, I think it'd be a fun run from all corners of the map. So like everybody chooses a different spawn location um, and then do your thing to get to the meetup location. It'd be a fun, a fun time. Oh, Center for a Stateless Society. I'm like, <laughs> C4SS link. Uh, some of the uh, C4SS books are fucking super based. Like, they talk about some shit. Um, yeah, no, Marcus, I don't like Don't Starve. <laughs> the reason I like Zomboid is because of the insane depth of the mechanics, Marcus. That's why I like Zomboid. It's just the absurd depth. Um, dude, Wordy, one of their books on, like, insurrectionary measures is crazy as fuck to read. <laughs> like, when and how to implement uh, violent methodologies. It's an interesting read. For sure. Um, oh, yeah, fucking New York passed right, for, uh, right to repair laws, finally. Wordy. How do I put this? It's interesting to see in re in black and white somebody put just put on a page. Sometimes you got to kill a motherfucker. What are you going to do? Not so much that long and short, right? You know, definitely paraphrased, but definitely on the page. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, New York got right to repair laws. Um, state legislature passed it last week. Uh, digital electronics manufacturers are required to make repair instructions and parts available to both consumer and independent technicians. So New York actually got like full on right to repair. Okay, first of all, how dare you? Second, the only game I know that's super deep mechanically is Divinity 2, but that's way more fancy, like full D&D &D feel. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm perfectly happy on Zomboid. I, I'm not... Karina has said, said to me before, she's like, I, you know, she's like, I'm jealous that you can just play a game. I can just play a game. Like, I don't, I don't need the next new game. I, I actually can be happy just playing a game. It's crazy, I know, right? Um, let's see. Okay. RCMP entered home while family slept, started questioning 11-year-old. What the fuck? Two RCMP officers entered a house of a family in Mount Moriah, uh, Newfoundland, and 
unannounced and questioned their 11-year-old daughter about a missing girl Sunday morning. They were awoken at 5.30 a.m. by sounds at the steps at the top of their staircase. She told her husband, Andrew, I think there's someone in our house. They just yelled out, hello. It wasn't, this is RCMP, nothing. Andrew jumped out of bed because he heard a strange man's voice in the house. He ran out and it was two police officers walking down our hallway. The fuck? The 11-year-old daughter said that she was awoken by a flashlight shining in her face. They came into her bedroom, opened up her bedroom door, walked in, and just shined a flashlight in the 11-year-old's face, saying she couldn't see who it was. Uh, To me, their first question should have been, where's your mother, where's your dad, where are your parents? But no, they were bombarding her with questions about some missing girl. The missing girl had been reported found several hours before the police showed up in their house. The girl had already been found, quote, several hours before the police showed up in their house. RCMP would not answer questions about the incident, but provided a statement to CBC News on Tuesday. The statement acknowledges the missing girl had been found the evening before, but says police received a report at 4 a.m. on Sunday morning that they were uh, the girl was missing again. After a sustained period of knocking, doorbell ringing, and verbal communication, police entered the residence through a supposedly unlocked door verbally announcing their presence. The resident owner was subsequently awakened and confirmed that the missing person was not present. Okay, Canada, you're on a roll. Like, that's some freaky-ass shit. You're casing the joint, exactly. Dude, that's some creepy-ass shit. Canada, you might want to fucking get on that. We got another dead one out of San Francisco. Jesus Christ. That is weird as shit. Imagine that. Your 11-year-old daughter fucking waking up. The cop fucking just got a flashlight in her face. Fucking grilling her as to the location of some missing person. And they just walked into your fucking house. Dude fucking in America you just shoot them like they just get shot the fuck castle doctrine doctrine for sure for sure what the fuck is up with that holy fuck oh it looks like our fucking Stan has finally left no let's see Let's see. Yeah. Where'd our, um, where'd our fucking authoritarian go? I didn't even notice that guy walked out. Oh, that's a shame. I wanted to play with that guy. Too dark. Couldn't tell. <laughs> oh, well. Mmm. Putin's postponing things for the first time in 18 years. Gets my parental instincts all turned up to a 10. I tear the house apart to get my, get my kiddo. Apparently, Vladimir Putin does an annual telephone marathon called Direct Line. This will be the first time that it won't be held in two decades. It's, it's when ordinary citizens speak directly to the Russian leader about their daily problems. It's delayed. Uh, Another regular presidential event, Putin's address to the Russian Federal Assembly was postponed last month as well. He's not doing well health-wise. He's not, yeah, ordinary, right? He's not doing well health-wise. Yeah. Those photos weren't good, and now 
that. Okay, I'll book that later then. Yeah, he does. It's actually something the U.S. should consider. Normally he does it for like five hours straight, but unfortunately it's not above board. Yeah, it's it's not anymore. I'm afraid of a shoe being thrown. GW, man. He was quick on his feet. I'll give him that. Nah, now would be a great time for him to run PR against citizen support. He's too, he's not ill. He's not well enough to do it. <coughs> he's too fucked up. Texas congressman's blaming smartphones now for the mass shootings. So, video games, uh, abortions, homosexuals, God not being in schools, now, quote, dang smartphones. Yeah, I saw a cat. Dang smartphones. He, he blames mass shooting on those dang smartphones. Overuse of these dang smartphones and the proliferation of social media. 5G or just in general? Sounds like just in general. Um. Oh, Aka. Yeah, don't doubt it. I don't doubt it at all. Did you see all the open call for remarks to LA City Council in 2020 regarding the LAPD and protests? It was beautiful. I don't know if I remember that. Maybe we've misunderstood the boomers. It's just a prolonged cry for help. Oh, no. No, I don't think so. I don't think it is, frankly. I don't think it is. <laughs> Iran turns off two of UN nuclear watchdogs' cameras. Um, Republican Senate whip mocked for saying AR-15s are needed to shoot prairie dogs. I mean, they're super useful at it, but they're not necessary. They really do a fucking job. Yeah. Boy, we'd teach him how to work Siri. This would all go away. Dude, my stepdad couldn't, couldn't use his iPhone without Siri. I'm not kidding you. He could not use his iPhone without Siri. Siri does everything. Siri does everything for him. Dials the numbers. Fucking... Searches the web, sends texts. He legitimately could not use his smartphone if it didn't have a digital assistant on it like Siri. 100%. 100 fucking percent. He wouldn't be able to. Change Siri to Spanish. <laughs> oh... It was the LAPD commission, but still. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Uh, do you have a time code? Aka? That's eight and a half hours. Viva, do it. Do it. Do it. Um... Oh, look, the EU is going to exempt private and corporate jets from green aviation fuel taxes. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Change Siri to Spanish. I didn't know I needed that chaos, but I, I do. 80648. Got it. 80648. But I know the leaders of you figure this out. I know it's going to take more than just you guys. So please. Get, get it the fuck together because this isn't going to stop. Thank you. Jeremy Frisch, followed by Ron, Juan Ramirez. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, yes. Black Lives Matter defund the police. I find it disgusting that the LAPD is slaughtering peaceful protesters on the street. I had two friends go to the protest in Beverly Hills a couple of days ago, and the protest was peaceful. And so the police showed up with their excessive violent force, shooting rubber bullets and throwing tear gas. Is this what you think of protecting and serving? Because I think it's bullshit. 
Fuck you, Michael Moore. I refuse to call you an officer or a chief because you don't deserve those titles. You are a disgrace. Suck my dick and choke on it. I yield my time. Fuck you. Thank you, Juan Ramirez, followed by Alana Spar. Is the one in the middle? Juan Ramirez, followed by Alana Spar. No, it's not. Okay, so it's this one, the board secretary. I wish she was on. I'd love to see your face. I, I yield my time. Fuck you. Hey, look at that. An eco fash on fucking in, uh, LSC post. No, it's an environment post. Oh, an article was posted on r slash environment, and it was about microplastics causing infertility. And the top voted comment is about how infertility is a great side effect since we're dealing with overpopulation. And people straight up calling him an eco. Dude called him an eco fash, and he got downvoted. Go home, eco fascist. Overconsumption due to capitalism is the issue. We have a surplus of goods. That dude got downvoted. Yeah. The the person who said infertility is a great side effect since we're dealing with overpopulation got upvoted. Yeah, we're headed that way. We're headed that way. Police chief suffered no consequences as far as I know. Infuriating those protests didn't bring much change. It should have. <laughs> <coughs> Family is suing Meta, Facebook, um, blames Instagram and uh, it blames Instagram for daughter's eating disorder and self-harm. A preteen girl, a preteen girl's addictive use of Instagram resulted in an eating disorder, self-harm and thoughts of suicide, according over several years, according to a lawsuit uh, against the par uh, platform's parent company. She was able to create an Instagram account at age 11 without parents' knowledge and in violation of the platform's minimum age requirement of 13. That's probably going to nullify their suit right there. That's going to fucking shoot her in the foot. Instagram's artificial intelligence engine almost immediately steered the then fifth grader into an echo chamber of content glorifying anorexia, self-cutting, and systematically fostered her addiction to using the app. I mean, you know, social media victim law center, Matthew B. Pergman said, if you look at the extensive research that the, 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 the Facebook themselves had performed, they knew exactly what they, uh, what they were doing to kids and they kept doing it. Uh, I wish I could say Alexis's case is aberrational. It's not. The only aberration is that she survived. Yeah. The fact that the daughter joined against terms of service is going to work against them. But if they can show a clear pattern of abuse and intentional targeting outside of that contractual range, yeah, maybe. It's weird because my whole Insta feed is plus size girls in lingerie or doing yoga. Could, them, uh, could they make an argument for there not being enough safeguards in place to prevent the opening of the account? I mean... No, because they're not, they're not required to. They're probably in compliance with the law. So they probably don't have to. Like that, that would be the sort of fundamental is if they're already in compliance with s local, state, and federal like, regulatory bodies on this one, then why do they need to go above and beyond what's legally required to be protected under that law? No. I, I, that's a difficult argument to make. I don't think they could successfully make it. Hey, microplastics found in freshly fallen Ar Antarctic snow for the first time. I'm sure some more capitalism will save us. Oh, look, another reality TV show star found guilty of a jury something. A in Atlanta convicted oh, Todd. Shut the fuck up. 
Todd and Julie Chrisley, stars of the reality show Chrisley Knows Best. Bank fraud, tax evasion. Yeah, figures. Conspiring to defraud the IRS, tax evasion, wire fraud, obstruction of justice. Okay, so they used a company to hide income from the IRS. That's, that's the long and short of it. They tried, they tried to get away with fucking over the IRS. Looks like it was the uh, documents they submitted to the bank that were fraudulent that bit them in the ass. Oh, oh, those are real numbers. $30 million in fraudulent loans. $30 million in fraudulent loans. Yeah. Poof. Um, I believe, let me check, Marcus, let me check. It's civil, Marcus, it's civil. So, yeah, that Chrisley knows best dude fucking took him out for a fucking round. Jesus Christ, 30 million in fucking, um. Fraudulent ones plus IRS tax evasion. They're gonna dude, they're gonna throw the fucking book at him. He's not he's not special enough to fucking warrant any any, you know, magic alleviation. He's going to just he and his wife are gonna do from fucking time. I don't know if he'll get resort prison or not. I mean, I don't know enough. I don't fucking know. A jury who, in Atlanta. I don't know who this fucking, like, I, I'm aware that show exists, but that's it. Fucking Todd and Julie Chrisley. Hang on. Okay, that's apparently a Todd and Julie Chrisley. He looks like Nick Swardson. Looks like Nick Swordson. Huh. Thirty million though. Not bad. Thirty million dollars in fraudulent loans. Jesus Christ. Uh Alex Lifeson. The guitarist of Rush. Of course I'm a Rush fan. Of course I'm a Rush fan. Uh, families of trans kids are suing to block Texas state investigations into them. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, temporary restraining order and a preliminary injunction. The suit is seeking. They haven't even granted it. Um, so Abbott in February ordered Department of Family and Protective Services in Texas to open child abuse investigations into transgender children receiving gender affirming care. In March, a judge temporarily halted it. The Texas Supreme Court ruled in May that the investigations could continue lifting the temporary injunction on the directive. And now there's a lawsuit in place to require that is requesting a temporary restraining order and a preliminary injunction to stop the investigation specifically targeting DFPS and its commissioner and the uh, and the governor um 
So we'll see. We'll see how that well how well that goes. Frankly, I don't have very high hopes. But you know, GTFO of Texas if you can right now. Like like right now, right now. <laughs> oh god, the age distribution of fucking Congress. I saw this graph. I'm not gonna pull up the Twitter, I'll just pull up the screenshot. Texas, not even once. <laughs> These fuckers just dude, carpe a hundred percent. Dude, the Senate just needs to go. Like you starting starting point. The Senate needs to go. Yeah, the landed gentry, the Lord's Manor, the fucking House of the Lords can fuck off. Fuck with this shit. You know, just to, just to keep a, a check on the uh, the unwashed, filthy masses that we'll be allowing into governance. The, you know, the learned men of the Senate should have the final say on things, of course. The fuck out of here with that landed gentry bullshit. Oh, look, the CEO who fired 900 people over Zoom is accused of misleading invest investors. I'm sure, I'm sure he'll, his fucking golden parachute's definitely going to be terrible. He'll get $18 million and he'll get to leave. judge but the example I use is in oral arguments a Supreme Court justice asked if HBO meant a person was displaying using an actual home theater because box office I guess oh. get rid of the Supreme Court people get rid of the fucking dude the parliamentary system alone is just fucked it's just fucked I mean the Senate was bad I mean don't get me wrong the Senate's bad here, but dude, fucking Congress isn't great either. So, as Lewis Black once said, he, uh, Lewis Black wanted to, um, wanted all of the American people just to go to Washington, D.C. and take everybody from the president on down out for an afternoon of electroshock therapy just to get them back on track. I understand that impulse. Oh, God. Did you fucking anybody see that fucking train derailment in, in Iran? Jesus Christ. Fucking at least 17 dead and 50 injured um, earlier in the morning. Fucking it, it's. Let's see. Do I have. Just bum fuck nowhere to just bum fuck nowhere. Not that I'm aware of at this point. Um, hold on. Let me see if anybody's... See if anybody's got a, a reason yet. I have a cause. Somebody was using an excavator in the area due to flooding, due to fl uh, uh, flash flooding in the area. And the excavator's boom 
was impacted by the train. Somebody, somebody left an excavator in the air, uh, like on the tracks, basically. For all intents and purposes, somebody left an excavator on the tracks. Yeah. And that was, that was that. I didn't see it in that pic in that video. Yeah, I don't see it. Um, I don't think I ever got around to season two of Orville Saber. And hey there, um, I did watch season one though, and I don't have any problems with it. I just never got around to watching season two. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, wordy. There you go, Wordy. Yeah, I Iran has like some very significant flash flooding. Yeah. It's like, it's a thing for them. There you go. The desert doesn't absorb water very well, um, Wordy. It's sort of a deal. That's why flash flooding happens in the desert. The top layer gets becomes baked by the sun, and it basically becomes ceramic-like. It becomes impermeable. So the water just slides over the surface layer in the desert. Yeah. So if it does rain, it doesn't matter if it rains five miles away. If there's even a slight slope, it's coming. It's coming. Flash flooding's a motherfucker. Um, so yeah, welcome, welcome to desert hydrodynamics. Jesus Christ. Exxon Mobil's fucking Q1 profits for this year. $5.4 billion. I think that white shit is called, uh, Kalichi for, uh, or something like that. It's, uh, it's like cement in the right conditions. We got it in my backyard. It sucks. <laughs> Fucking Aka said, thanks, Obama. Um, we're already good to know. We get flash floods in temperate zones, so I don't know anything about deserts. Yeah. Um, pretty sure you're more likely to dr uh, die from drowning in the desert than from dehydration, which is eternally amusing to me. Um, it depends on the area as to whether the statistics hold out, Marcus. But yes, there's, there's a significant chance of drowning in the middle of the desert. It, it, it is quite a thing. Um, the 127 hours guy, um, that's what all those fucking, um, what those canyons are. That's all just flooding here. Yeah, that's what that is. That's all carved from flash flooding. It rains five miles up desert and this canyon just fills with water. Just fast moving, fast flowing water. It's what all those canyons are about. It's all just fucking flash flood water sh uh, drainage. <laughs> yeah, generally, if you live in the desert, you know how to keep hydrated. You don't know how to deal with a shitload of water. Dude, it will, what is it? Like a couple, like three, four inches will move a fucking car. Like it will just move a car. One inch will just take you off your feet. Yeah. Yeah, it's generally recommended in floodwaters here. If it's an inch or deeper, uh, you stay the fuck out of it because an inch of water will sweep uh, uh, sweep a person right off their feet. Um, also, it's not just water. That's the other thing to consider. When you experience flooding in the desert, it's not just water that's hitting you. There is debris in that water. And so it's, it's more akin to sticks and rocks and tree branches and fucking shit like that. It's a wall that hits you. And so, yeah, if one inch of water, stay the fuck out. It'll sweep you off your feet and just drag you downstream. And then a few inches after that, it'll move a car. It's ridiculous. Um, Salt Lake City, Utah, actually has the opposite problem. It's the drying of the lake that is making an ecological disaster. I mean, well, I mean, 
you know, fucking Salt Lake. Yes, yes, I saw a fucking video about this. The 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 toxic air because of the drying out of the uh, the Great Salt Lake. Yeah, that it literally high levels of arsenic. That's what it is. Yeah, it's high levels of fucking arsenic. And when they, uh, <laughs> as it dries up even further and the wind whips up in the valley, um, it picks up the arsenic, the, the salt, the arsenic laden salt, uh, and dirt. And just that's fucking, yeah, that's what they're breathing in. Yeah. God hates Utah confirmed. Um, we get like three or four inches and it's like, all right, time for boots. Yeah, no, we get three or four inches of fast moving water here. If wordy, it's stay the fuck in your house. Don't, don't go outside. When I was in Texas, we were always told, turn around, don't drown. Yeah, we have the same, we have the same thing here, Crimson. Uh, flood season, we, all the billboards go up, you know. Yeah. Keep you, don't be an idiot. Keep your fucking car out of flood, flash flood zones. And I mean, we have washes. Um, I'll show you a wash. Here's a wash. These are, these are all over the desert. This is just a natural wash. This is flash flood. This is what this is. If you're, if you're ever walking through the desert in the Southwest and you come across a little fucking valley like this and you're like, oh, I can just walk through it. That's actually dangerous. This is called a wash and it can rain miles away and you don't even realize it until you hear, you hear this low, um, vibration. It's very low in the register. Um, and water. It will come fast. At first, you'll be like, oh, there's a little water. Get the fuck out. Yeah, these things are actually dangerous. These are, that's, it's called a desert wash. And it's the result of flash flooding. So weird thing about America that the oil pipelines are major importance of having a grid or water pipes cro across country is not so important. I know, right? Um, oh yeah, here's here's um, here you go. Here's Death Valley. This is, this is Death Valley. This is right next to Death Valley, Panamint Springs, heading out of Trona. Right across. Half wave. Well, actually we're about 10 clicks from Ballarat right here. Ah, plus three points for saying click. Yeah, we've got an underground river here on the Mojave. It only pops up when it rains, but it's amazing how fast thing that pops up. Yep. Um, the Mojave. Let's see. Yeah, here's um, here's the Mojave River via PCT. Here's the Mojave River via PCT, but here's when it isn't flooded. Here's when it's flooded. Go around, man. Just go around. It's not, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's never been worth it. If survival shows have taught me one thing, it's that deserts are terrifying. They are. So what you're telling me is don't go into low zones in, to the, uh, in the desert. 
Yeah, <laughs> some sense tag was gone. Yeah, they're like, yep, I'm out. I'm out, motherfucker. Um, we're already high places, low places, dry places, places with casinos, places with meth labs, places with just avoid the desert, man. The, the desert is a place of survival. It just is. Even, even in cities, uh, the desert is a place of survival. It just is, man. Like every year we have at least one tourist die from fucking heat stroke because y'all motherfuckers come here and we warn you nonetheless we're like hey you need to carry water with you hey air conditioning is a matter of life and death hey you're gonna want to take breaks and stay inside right fucking every year tourists come here and they're like oh it's not that hot it's a dry heat and every year motherfuckers die it's never locals. It's always you fucking visitors. It's always fucking tourists. We tell you, don't go anywhere with water without water. Don't go anywhere without air conditioning. Don't get fucking stuck out in the desert. But hey, motherfuckers take their to- their rented Toyota Camry out into the goddamn fucking desert, off roading it, thinking that they're not gonna get stuck. Next thing you know, we got to fun, uh, send fucking SAR out there to find their dumb asses and drag them back if they're still alive or not. I'd never seen places selling commercial ban- uh, banana bags, saline IV bags until I visited L- uh, Las Vegas. That shit blew my mind. We will come to your hotel with a bus, with like a, a private bus, and pick you up and put put a fucking uh, uh, pick line in your uh, arm so you can uh, get vitamins and uh, electrolytes pushed in an IV bag. Yes, that's very much a Las Vegas thing. We Not only will we do it, like, we'll pick you up the casino in a bus. There's facilities all around Las Vegas to do that. Yeah, you can stop in and just get a saline push. Your mom's vagina is a dry heat. I'm surprised some of these idiots don't dehydrate, and dehydrate, uh, dehydrate in their own houses. Um, I mean, rental people may, but the locals know better. You spend one, you spend one summer in Las Vegas, and you know better. You know better instantly. Oh, I know. What, yeah, I, I know what the skeleton coast looks like off the top of my head, even Saber. Um, actually with climate change and an expansion of the equatorial region, most of the Western side of the U S America could one day be like, uh, this pretty amazing area of the world. It's called the skeleton coast. Um, I at least felt thirsty with dry heat with human heat. You can constantly feel hydrated when you're not, um, crimson. Most people don't feel thir- by the time you feel thirsty in a dry heat, you you're already behind the curve. Like, you need electrolytes pushed at that point. Um, yeah. Most people don't notice because you don't notice when you sweat here. That's the danger here. We, um, you don't notice, you, you don't, you don't sweat. Whereas, like, the, the humid heat, you don't notice because you're already wet. The dry heat, it evaporates before you can even feel sweat on your brow. It's, it's a weird thing. Also, you know, yeah, 120 degrees. Let's see. Let's use a gallop.
Interesting. Any change in lifespan under low temperature. This is this is from the latest genetic study on the matter. Um, experimental uh, gerontology uh, MBL uh, study. Uh, Laboratories of Gribble and MBL Director of Research, D David Mark Welch. Um, here is the study link. It is controlled by um, genetics more than anything else. He said, uh, role of temperature in free radical theory of aging, which has been around since the 1950s. Um, it could potentially passively lower metabolic rate. Uh, and that would slow the release of um, free radicals, which would theoretically slow down cellular damage. But the change in lifespan under low temperature is actively controlled by specific genes. So you have to pay attention to the genetic variability uh, when you think of response to anti-aging therapies. So, you know, it doesn't seem to be the cold per se, but your genetic response to the cold. Uh, Red, that was a map of um, ages, uh, average ages uh, of, uh, of um, residents. Let's see. That's uh, survival rate age. Where did my fucking thing go? So California, Colorado, New York, Hawaii, Can unpause. There we go. Oh yeah, I saw this. Yeah, the the gel. Places with the best weed. That's my conclusion. Yeah. New England, California, Colorado. Yeah. I mean, if it were true, California wouldn't be in that list. If it were just purely cold temperatures holding up those ages, then, you know, yeah. California couldn't make the list. <laughs> oh, look, widening gap in death rates between areas that vote Democratic rather than Republican. Who would have guessed? Looks like it was published in the British Medical Journal. Um, there's the DOI. Thank you. There we go. To assess recent trends in age-adjusted mortality rates in the United States based on country-level presidential voting patterns. Participants, 99.8% of the U.S. population. 2000-2019. The mortality gap in Republican voting counties compared with Democratic voting counties has grown over time, especially for white populations. That gap began to widen after 2008. Who would have guessed? All right. So age-adjusted mortality rates, AMR. Spear, uh, the study covered five presidential elections from 2000 to 2018, from 20, 2001 to 2019. The age-adjusted mortality rate per 100,000 population decreased by 22% in Democratic counties from 850.3 per 100,000 to 664 per 100,000. Um, average APC minus 1.4%, 95% conf confidence interval, uh, negative 1.5 to 1.2%, but only 11% in Republican counties from 867 to 771. So it is dropping 0 0.7, 0 0.9 to 0 0.5. Um, the gap in the AAMR between Democratic and Republican counties therefore widened from 16.7%, 167 uh, 16 95% uh, confidence interval to 107.1. That's a big fucking jump, actually. Statistically significant inflection points in APC occurred for Democratic counties between periods of 2001 to 2009. 
for Republican counties between 2001 and 2008, APC was minus 1.4. What was it uh, APC 2? Minus 2.1. Um, slowing to near zero between 2008 and 2019. Male and female residents of Democratic counties experienced both lower age-adjusted mortality rate and twice the relative decrease in AMR than did those in Republican counties. Black Americans experienced largely similar improvements in AMR in both Democratic and Republican counties. Uh, however, the AMR gap between white residents in Democratic versus Republican counties increased fourfold from 24.7 to 101.3. Rural Republican counties experienced the highest AAMR and the least improvement. All trends were similar when comparing counties that did not switch political environment throughout the period and when gubernatorial elections results were used. The greatest contributors to the widening AAMR gap between Republicans and Democratic counties were heart disease, cancer, chronic lower respiratory tract disease, COVID, followed by unintentional injuries and suicide. So heart disease, cancer, and COVID are killing off the Republicans. It, heart attack, cancer, and COVID. That's why COVID is third in the list already. Yeah, it's been going on for a while. It just got worse. That's all. Ivermectin somewhere down the list. No, it just makes them fucking go sterile and shit themselves a lot. Um. Oh, yeah. Heart disease is... Well, it depends if you're a kid. If you're a kid, dig. No guns are number one cause of death. Um, if you're an adult, though, I'm pretty sure it's still heart disease. Still heart disease. It's heart disease, cancer, then COVID. That's that's the list for Americans. Heart disease uh, data for 2020, um, 696, 962. Cancer, 602, 350. COVID, 350, 8, 831. Accidents, 200,000. Stroke, 160, blah, 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 blah. Um, well, unintentional injuries, injuries would be number four, Dick. That'd be 200,955. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's just, that's the list for Americans is heart disease, cancer, and COVID. So it follows. But that's interesting. That's the widening gap in the AMR for uh, between Republican and Democratic counties. And since they used, a, since this was a cross-sectional study and they used the entirety of the CDC data, did 99.8% of the U.S. population, as far as we've been able to track. Con conclusion. Overall, our finding that Democratic counties have experienced steeper declines in mortality than Republican counties over the past two decades builds upon previous evidence suggesting that more liberal policies, laws, and regulations may be associated with better health outcomes. Uh, Yeah, rural Republicans experience the highest mortality rate across the board. If if you want the highest mortality rate, I think you may actually have to be a, Repu a rural Republican at this point. I mean, I'm sure there are like some niche groups, black black M uh, MTF trans that sort of territory. Um. Burger Man, sure. That wasn't within the scope of the study.
capitalism is inherently hierarchical. It is inherently coercive. It is inherently, uh, inherently exploitative system. Anarchism is a hierarchical or horizontal system that seeks to eliminate coercion and exploitation within a system. Capitalism has inherent intrinsic flaws that are built into the foundation of it that are required for it to even function. It also is, it requires the necessity of a state. Any elimination of a state around, uh, around uh, surrounding, anar uh, surrounding capitalism will re uh, result in an airsatz replacement. Airsatz is just a fancy word for replacement anyway. It will end up in an airsatz state. Um, they will replicate the police. They will put, replicate the core systems using arbitrage. They will replicate private military. They will replicate uh, code of conduct. At the end of the day, capitalism is antithetical to anarchism. So that's why. Talk about COVID. Did you see Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, basically prove that Alex, uh, like Alex Jones uh, with Antifa super soldiers, she understands jokes like Arthur Fleck. Oh God, what'd she do? Marjorie Taylor Greene outraged by parody Twitter account labeled as misleading. Um, Twitter censored a satirist who, proposed, who propagated a right-wing narrative that most pregnant women who took Pfizer's vaccine in a clinical trial lost their babies as a result of getting the jab. Green's gaffe stems from a recent interview between conservative talk show host Jesse Kelly and anti-vaccine advocate Naomi Wolf. Wait, isn't? Hang on. Where the fuck is Naomi Wolf? No, that's not who I was thinking of. Maybe? Of course, she's third wave. Of course. Doctor of Philosophy in English Literature from Oxford. Um, oh, Zippy, don't worry about it. So, massive experiment. If the baby die off, we know why. All right. Okay, so this is the satirist. Oh, okay, Marcus, that's why. And then this idiot retweets it. Of course, of course, of course, why not? I mean, she believes in Jewish space lasers. Of course, she, why not? Why wouldn't she be tricked by some fucking dummy parody account? I mean, how many times has Devin Nunez uh, fucking sued the cow? These people don't get it. I get a functional level, they don't get it. So... I don't know. There was no response to her. I'm good. <sighs> Zippy, maybe one day, maybe one day, you will be elevated to the status of being followed by the cow. When you've made it, Zippy, the cow will follow you. Uh, how many times has he sued that cow? How many times has Devin Nunez sued the cow?
he sued a bunch of people. <laughs> being Nirvana, being followed by the the Devin Nunez cow. I know, right? He asked for two hundred and fifty million dollars. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Rev. Oh, me toad. Fuck it, I'm gonna milk that joke for all it's worth. Tom Bloke Antifa Super Soldiers me was probably the most hilarious thing and even Tom's Tim Pool's claim that Ethan Klein's edgy joke about the NRA is a sign of civil war. Um, no, that was N Nick Fuentes that I was thinking of. Like, Jesus Christ. No, that's, that's Tim Pool. That's fucking Beanie himself. That's, uh, that's Vosh's, uh, that's, um, that's Vosh's secret lover. Oh, fuck you, be toad. Um, Yo, I know, Burger Man, you went to school for like eight years and shit. You're like, I got a law degree for this, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, those who don't know the Destiny Lauren Southern thing, uh, I've been cracking a joke for ages, just trying to see if anybody fucking bites. Uh, his secret? Boosh doesn't keep his lover a secret. Um, guy who's bunkered in Montana or whatever, dude, Tim Pool. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been trying to convince people that Vosh and Tim Pool have been having a secret affair for like the last couple of years, and that like Vosh just holds down like mushes fucking Tim Pool's like he holds him by the fucking beanie and just mushes his face in the fucking couch and just just absolutely buggers him. Yeah. Yeah. I think I I, I think Vosh would get it. I think Vosh gets it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, that fucking Dallas mute you for five minutes. What do I come back to? Uh, fuck's sake, I didn't need that mental image. Wait, who's the top? Oh, Vosh is the top for sure, Dick. For sure, Vosh is the top. Yeah. I mean. I'm not gonna lie, Marcus, you're not wrong. Oh, um, I meant to, what, Jesus Christ. Um, okay. He's a top and the dom in that affair. Hey, cat, you still here? I'm gonna need to talk to you. No, Cat's not here. Okay. I'll talk to Cat later. Uh, CTV got banned for doing some fascist shit. Just, uh, just FYI. What, what, wither. More. More details. Yeah, I don't necessarily know who that is either. Zippy. I mean... Canadian television. I mean, that's who CTV. I, I don't know who this person is. Critical thinking, thinking veteran. Um, He turned a fucking pride flag into a swastika, apparently. That's what got Critically Thinking Veteran his ban. He turned a pride flag into a swastika. So, that's what got him his ban. And in his call out for help, 
the list of people he tags. It's interesting. Infrared, Fabian Liberty. Uh, everyday uh, Bastiat, uh, Bastiat, uh, corporate attorney in America's natural gas industry, landlord. Cool. I don't know if that's a fucking troll account or not. Let's see. Um. He's no, he's real. He's the he's super lib. All right, cool. All right, so just tons of fucking people that are just the best of people. He apparently thinks that labeling his cha uh, channel stand-up comedy automatically protects him. That's his, that's what he's claiming, actually. Oh, there's Blair White, too. There's Blair White. He's calling out to Blair White for help as well. So, Infrared, Fabian Liberty, fucking the corporate attorney for the natural gas industry, good old Blair White herself. Yeah. Uh, I mean, here, just go to his fucking account, Wordy. Carpe, basically a lawyer who may or may not be involved with mitigating the socioeconomic liability of gas companies. And by may or may not, I mean, I'm going to editorialize Carpe. And by may or may not, I mean, for definitely, definitely for sure he is. Oh, no, Dylan Burns is on there. Time to duck. Dylan Burns is in there. Sonsol's in there. Dylan Burns is in there. Uh, the Sigma Sprout or Sprouticus, constitutional conservative. He's in there. Um, let's see. Yeah, no, he's in there. Moff Karam. D Dylan's in there too. He's down in the, the Vosh... Destiny level. Let's see. View this. He's trying to claim that Twitch banned him for using the pride flag. He's trying to say that he's literally saying, I can't believe that Twitch thinks that the LGBTQIA plus pride flag is a hate symbol. Where's all my pride supporters at? Meanwhile, according to people in Twitter, what he actually did was turn the pride flag into a swastika and then use that on air. Night, Puka. <laughs> Who is this dummy, by the way? I've heard of critically thinking veteran over the years, but who is this dude? It's on the Twitter account. Oh, for fuck's sake. He's Dylan's token chud. Oh, I'm serious. All the studs that stop us uh, chuds that stop by here. Follow him says uh, cupcake. Okay. He's the conservative host that Dylan works with to produce content. Memes a lot, goes on hippy dippy. 
Okay, fuck that guy. What an edgy boy. Probably, narrator. Probably. But as long as I provide the commentary, I at least feel okay about it. You know? I, 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 yes. Under Twitch Terms of Service, probably narrator. Probably. Um, but as far as my own ethical considerations go, the fact that I'm contextualizing it as such, done. I'm good with that. Uh... and very unclever of him. Really? If you ever speak to him for five seconds out of a stream, it's all fucking persona. He just drinks and then streams. Okay. Oh, I'm just seeing Christian American constitutional conservative and philosopher of history. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, look. Critically thinking veterans recommending me Hassan. Um... Retweeting Steven Crowder. Oh, there's that uh, noir guy. Dark chocolate MAGA. Jesus Christ. Hey, there's Dave Rubin. Kyle Rittenhouse. Being libertarian. Okay. I think I've pretty much seen what I need to see. The fact that he's a pizza cutter. <laughs> uh, he's very religious also Checks all the nutbag boxes uh, Let's see, let's go back ways um, Twitch allows for hate speech symbols on stream As long as you aren't promoting them is good They allow for critical discourse Yeah, Aspen, sure they do uh, Aka, yeah, those are certainly words Not sure he knows what it means though uh, I told him to go fuck himself Then blocked him on Discord, says Wordy He's very religious also Checks all the nutbag uh, boxes, says Crix uh, regard uh, Let's see, Aspen uh, Regardless of Dylan being a fed uh, Carpe, he's a pizza, pizza cutter, uh, playing victim. Also being boosted by Dylan doesn't discourage bad behavior. Mm, I would guess. He's ex-Navy. He severed a, uh, he served aboard a, an aircraft carrier, uh, carrier, and his naval history is pretty good. It's just his understanding of politics not helping by living in Florida. That doesn't help. I mean, he's also a chaser, so people think he's one of the good ones because he has trans friends, but you know what that really means. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> Good, 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 to, good, good to know, I guess. 
Oh my god. The Metro 2033 author has been put on a, gov- a Russian government wanted list for condemning the invasion of Ukraine. He's facing 10 years in prison for violating a law that forbids discredi- discrediting the armed forces of Russian Federation. Dmitry Kovlovsky. He was added to the Interior Ministry's wanted list yesterday. He said on a post on Telegram that he is, quote, accused of discrediting the armed forces of the Russian Federation for a post on Instagram. Uh, That apparently refers to this post made on March 12th, shortly after the law against criticism of the war went into effect. What does that say? What, What does that say in... Stop the war, recognize that this is a real war against an entire nation, and stop it. Stop this war immediately, is what he said. So you may not be getting a fucking another Metro sequel. (laughs) I want to be banned from Russia. I feel serious FOMO. Dig, being banned from fucking Russia is impressive. Um... Yeah, I mean, Beast, you just, that's for the best. That's for the best to just avoid some of those platforms, or at least the uh, channel space. Oh, look, COVID 19 may affect babies' brain development in womb, study says. Who would have guessed? Throwing a, a mother's fucking immune system into an absolute tailspin would fuck with a child's development. I feel inadequate sometimes because I don't get online hate messages. So clearly no are near Russia ban. Okay, so Dig, here's what you want to do. You just want to find it, Infrared, has Infrared on Twitter or on YouTube. Go into his YouTube channel when he's streaming or a cozy TV or wherever he is these days. Fucking track down has. Go into his chat and uh, tell him he's a he's a manlet and that he'll never uh, he'll never get into any woman's pants. Also mention something about it's because he's a uh, it's because he he likes Stalin. Um, just just tell Has that because he likes Stalin, he's actually a manlet and will never uh, never ever get laid. He'll just lose his mind. He'll just lose his mind and he'll start screaming at you, and then his chat his chat will send you death threats. You will get death threat after death threat after death threat. If if that's what you're after, if that's what uh, that will make you feel included, dig. There you go. Fucking, if you want a death threat, the tankies will pay out with death threats. Do they pay out all the time with death threats? You find a Juche stand and you're off to the fucking races. Do those fuckers really issue death threats? Tell him Stalin was three kids in a trench coat and he was the bottom. I'm the same height as Napoleon and Teddy. I resent this man with slander. Yeah, Marcus, Napoleon was like, what, 5'7"? Dude, Has is like 5'1". I mean, you've seen him. Look at him. Uh, Prince was taller. Um, fucking here, quote, three things women love, tall men, English accents, and knowing how many holes we have. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll fucking get him run, just running. Fucking. Yeah. Ugh. Um. <clears throat> so they were just price gouging us.
so they can afford to cut prices. How about wage increases? No, <laughs> they're not paying the peasants anymore, beast. What, if, what are you fucking talking about? Uh, oh, yeah, I worked there for my first job. Basically tell you they make up prices. Yeah, right. Fucking beast. Jesus Christ. Hey, fuck it. Raise. Raise wages. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Dude, my um my heart rate monitor. Um cheap Chinese plastic right here, right? We're we're the band. They replaced it easily enough, but they sent me um they sent me an email asking about like the, the, the quality survey and I told them like about customer service. I was like, customer service was great. You could do the answered the phone. They got a fucking replacement out to me right away. I said, but we wouldn't have had to waste any of these resources or engage your customer service department if you didn't manufacture cheap Chinese junk. Right. And this is, there's no other fucking option here. Like Wahoo is one of the fucking main heart rate monitor providers, right? They, they fucking, you can get a fucking Nike one. It's just rebranded. Um, it's like, I don't really have much off it option when it comes to heart rate monitors, right? Even the fucking, even if I buy like a Medtronic heart rate monitor, it's Chinese junk. Um, so like, I'm like, you know, if you didn't make your shit out of cheap Chinese plastic, maybe we wouldn't have to engage this customer service event, but Hey, who's got time for solutions? Literally put it into the customer service, uh, into the, the, the quality assurance forum for them. It's like, Hey. Uh, I did. Uh, it's because of the lung to uh, the the lung uh, boom. I did know that Scottish haggis was banned in the U.S. It was because of the awful awful that went into it. Stevie's, which is why they shouldn't exist in the first place. I say we return to how the founding fathers set up corporate uh, corporate structures in this uh, in this country. But hey, I think we have a corporations command. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure there's a corporations command. Ah. Uh, Trust Yanks to breed animals you can't make haggis out of your country sex. No, Caleb, we can't import it. It, it. it it we can yeah, it has nothing to do with like manufactured haggis here. It has to do with imported. It it, it can't come in from Scotland. It's illegal. Yeah. It doesn't have to do with us making it. It's to do with y'all making it and us receiving it. Yeah, we don't trust we don't trust Scotland to make it. <laughs> yeah. It's it's illegal to import it. Yeah, uh, sheep's sheep's lungs are deemed unfit for human consumption by our uh, our FDA. Yeah, lungs are not food in this country. But you can get it from the right butcher and make it your damn self. Yeah. Yep. It's entirely possible to make. But, yeah, you have to... Generally, you have to know somebody who slaughters an animal. <laughs> Wait, I can't eat fucking lungs? What is this capitalist bullshit? Marcus, Dave is my massage, uh, is my massage guy. I'm arranging an appointment for Cat while he's here, so Cat can finally get a uh, proper massage. I'm gonna, I'm gonna treat Cat to a massage with my massage guy, um, so Cat can finally experience. So I'm just trying to coordinate and arrange. 
Oh yeah, Wordy, every Saturday. Every Saturday. Yeah. Um, we're gonna right over to Squiddy. Uh, I'm gonna jump in VC for a little bit uh, while I get a few things prepared, and then I'm gonna do some exercise, and then maybe I might get a zomboid session in a little later. Um, but yeah, yeah, I need to talk to Cat though. Gotta keep that in mind before I get distracted. Dig, take care of yourself over on that side of the fucking town. It's not safe over there. It's not safe on that side of town, Dig. I don't trust it. <laughs> uh, Aspen said, hell yeah, I need the company tonight. All right, well then, I'll be in VC, Aspen. Feel free to join. So. All right. Seven, six, five, four. Catch y'all later. Say hi to Squiddy. Enjoy yourselves. Behave. Bye.